Good evening, here we are. We're going to look at some of the new features of Simavio that allow you to configure it so that you can display your own panels on multiple screen layouts. Currently we have the new version of Simavio loaded and we have the splash screen loaded. So let's go and load a file. While that loads, Simavio now allows you to define the area over which the panels display and how many monitors the panels display over with multiple monitors of different sizes, different layouts and different positions. And here's a panel just come up as it comes straight out of the box with a transparent area at the top and 2G1000 displays one. But we're going to come out of this real-time mode so that we can illustrate some of the features. There are several new controls enabling us to change the appearance of each instrument within Simavio. Uh, for professional applications and on your own simulators, you may want to, for instance, remove any knobs from the rendering of the instruments. So if you can see the knobs on the altimeter and standby horizon, clicking the knob rendering turns the knobs off. Or we can turn them back on. Similarly, we can turn off the uh, bezels around the instrument. Looks a little ugly, but we can see why we might want to do that later on. We also have some other controls shown underneath the preferences window which we will talk about later. Basically we're interested in these, this area down here which lets us start up, start up in the real-time mode or make the backgrounds transparent or even reverse the projection so that we could back project this image uh, onto a screen and things would be the right way around. And various other controls uh, that you can discover at your own leisure. The main new control, however, is based around deciding what layout we would like from new master panels that are provided by Synavio. To do the uh, layout, we can have a look under Edit and Layout. And what you'll notice is Synavio stretches itself all the way across uh, the screen, uh, doesn't quite fit right now, and it shows us the screen layout uh, that we have connected to the simulator at this time. And in fact, you can see we have two screens here uh, set up in a, a weird way. And we can move in the Synavio window around and we can just drag it around and change its size. And just for demonstration purposes, we'll make it fit nicely uh, on a small window. You can see that the instruments don't quite fit in the window, but we can make them fit by changing the size of the screen or the size of the virtual instrument panel. And typically we would like the bottom of the instrument panel to be at the bottom of the screen, so we can also change the position in uh, X and Y. And if we make the panel fit, then we can display it and show you the effect of that. OK, here we are and let's go out of uh, layout mode by closing the window and by closing the window we'll maintain any changes we've made and we go back into the normal view and let's see what that looks like in the real-time view or the masked view. If I can press the button. And as you can see, uh, we have a mask view in the same position and the panel now fits. Well, that's not quite right, of course, because we would like the panel to fit over the whole of the screen. And perhaps we might like this area above the top uh, to be transparent so we could see the background image or the uh, out of the window view, uh, not just some blackness. 
Okay, back out of masked view with Control M. And back to where we were, and back into the uh, layout. And all we should probably really have to do now is press full screen, and Synavio lines up on uh, full screen, but we do have a little adjustment to make. And there we are, that, that looks pretty good. So let's again close and control M. And now we're lined up perfectly on the screen, but still no transparency. So let's have a look at some of those preferences, control P, and uh, turn on make background transparent when mask. And it calculates the mask, and you can see the uh, rather special background of a nice sky. Um, where the 3D view would be. And thus we've got Simavio set up for one screen in a mode where you would have the out of the window view uh, behind Simavio. Okay, let's try some more variations and uh, try changing the color of the background panel so we can make it look like our own individualized aircraft. Back into the uh, normal mode and into layout mode. And we can set the panel color to be uh, almost any color that we would like. So we can type in RGBs or just move around. Clearly uh, not very realistic colors, so let's set it to some normal aircraft gray. And if we're going to make the uh, screen transparent, um, if we find that uh, black doesn't work for us because the system works by looking at all the colors in the top and making them transparent, we could uh, actually change the uh, back color uh, to something more appropriate so that we know uh, a deep purple uh, is going to be the transparent color. And presumably we don't have any deep purple colors in the rest of the uh, image. So let's save those changes and uh, then we can uh, go back into the full view and see what's happening. Here we go, back into the uh, real-time mode. And now you can see we have a grey panel with uh, still with uh, transparent upper surface and uh, looks a little bit more realistic and more like the aircraft that we want. There are several other important features that we can change uh, in the simulation of the avionics panel. Now, one of them is that Simavio simulates multiple aircraft types. So how do we decide which aircraft type? In the layout window, you can see that we have uh, six aircraft here uh, that we could simulate from a 172 to a 206. And by changing the uh, aircraft that we're simulating, uh, then we modify the simulation's uh, engine and other parameters uh, to simulate that aircraft. And so let's set this to a, a 172R, and that will be a 172R uh, that we'll be simulating for all the engine gauges uh, when we're in the run time. Similarly, um, we can see here that we have some overlays of the uh, instruments that light up when we move the mouse over them. Uh, we might not want these to uh, be shown. If we don't want them to be shown, we can look at the preferences and disable the mouse over control indication, in which case all of those indications disappear. However, we still leave a mouse over trail and so if you want to operate in that mode you can. If we don't use mice at all then uh, none of the instruments uh, will get that mouse over indication. Now there is uh, one other important feature again in the preferences is to be able to back project this image. Uh, we set the back project uh, flag in preferences then when we go to masked mode uh, what you can see is that the uh, instrument is uh, reversed and that's so we could project the image onto a screen from the rear and you may have just one big screen for your cockpit display 
rather than monitors. Clearly we might want to uh, remove some instruments or add other instruments to our panel to further customise its, its look and its feel and uh, get it closer to your aircraft. Here you can see that we uh, have all of the different instruments in a list and we can select them simply by clicking on them. A red line comes around the outside of them. When we click on them, we can click and simply drag them to wherever we, to wherever we want. And luckily, we have a Control Z undo system that will bring things back to where they were before. Uh, in the list here, you can also see that we have uh, an ADF that's not been displayed right now. ADF is required in Europe. Uh, we can turn the ADF on, and you can see it appearing behind the uh, standby instruments. And again, we can just turn it on and off. Uh, to fit the ADF in, we may have to uh, rescale. And we can again just click and drag and move them around. Or we can shift click, select them all, move them around. And just generally create our own panels. can do these uh, scales and changes also by numbers just by moving things on the controls or typing numbers in and again we have a control C to get us back to safety Finally, once when we're happy with all of our background colors, panel colors, layouts, how it's going to be selected across multiple screens, whether we have bezels on or off, which instruments are on or off, we can finally save that layout and uh, in a very quick uh, layout save, we've saved it away for further use. And of course, all of the layouts that you save can actually be uh, loaded automatically as your simulator changes its aircraft with another tool we'll talk about later which is when the, air, when the simulator changes the aircraft so SimAvio also automatically loads uh, another layer. That's it for now. Goodbye from Fly This Sim. Yeah.